I managed to get my hands on a very cool computer. It is a computer that technically I'm not supposed to have or be able to buy, nor is the average consumer supposed to be able to buy. It is pretty much only for enterprise and business grade stuff. Here's what it is. This is an all-in-one HP desktop. Looks standard enough, standard computer right here. What about this computer is so special you may be asking? This little sticker right here, Intel Core i5 V Pro. VPro is a line of CPUs that is supposed to be exclusive for business grade and enterprise level customers where they're buying it in bulk, where it is more efficient battery wise, as far as I've read a little bit faster, has extra cyber security features and makes it easier to do things like manage it from a distance and remote access and a bunch of extra features like that, which is a lot of pros. I managed to get one second hand from someone I know in a business as the average consumer can't just buy this off a shelf. Not as far as I can read it. And so I want to try and boot it up, see if I can get it working, see how powerful it is, do some test benching and run some stuff on it, see how it goes. The first thing I'm going to do is just try turning it on, see where it goes, see what it does, and if anything interesting happens. Immediately upon hitting the power button, Windows does boot up, but just off the bat, I'm suspecting I'm going to have to wipe it and reset it, sadly, because it'll probably have an Enterprise one on it. The only problem is if I reset it, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to access from the VPro. Okay, exactly what I thought. Basically, I can't get access to Windows as it is right now because it needs to be connected to the organization's network, which means I'm going to have to try my best to wipe Windows without being connected to that network. I've got a Windows boot drive here, so this is going to be interesting. Zach in editing here. I was not sure that it was actually going to work, though, because, uh, as I said, this is baked into the hardware. As far as I was aware, it was going to be completely locked down and unable to let me access it at all. I'm trying to go into recovery mode so I can try and boot from the Windows USB from there. Okay, I'm attempting to reset the PC. Clean the drive fully. And if this doesn't work, I'm going to try and reinstall. The only problem with resetting this, as, as I said, I'm not going to be able to do remote access functionality for testing because you need to be a business for that to set it up, which I am not. Okay, I've been letting it reset and it needs to reset the trusted platform module. Hopefully this loads into a version of Windows. Okay, I didn't go into the standard Windows boot menu. So it says it's installing Windows and it's at 9%. So I'm just going to let it go and see what it does. Very interesting. It's now asking for some information like my country and region, preferred app language, keyboard, time zone. Very interesting. Even though I'm yet to boot from the boot device I've got on the back of the computer. So I'm going to try filling this out. Okay, I've gone through and set up Windows. And I think that it didn't actually use the USB at the back. I've set up a local Windows, but I think it set up the business edition of Windows. But it should be finally setting up a Windows that we can get into now. And that way we can check out things like specs and whatnot. I'm also curious as to what exact HP this is. As it's a HP Elite 1, which is a line of HP all-in-one desktops. But it's got multiple in it. And so I don't know what the specs are, except for the Core i5 V Pro. I'm also curious of a few things like will the VPro shop in Task Manager? But I've got it launching up now. And with that, it's in Windows. The very first thing I want to do is open Task Manager, I think. According to this, it's also downloading Windows features still. Ooh, disk is already flooring it, so we might have a hard drive in this thing. Ooh, it's got 500 gigs, but not saying whether it's a hard drive or an SSD, where it not, like it normally does. But just judging off of the speed, it looks like it might be a hard drive. Good old Intel HD Graphics 530. The good old classic integrated Intel graphic. Wi-Fi, of course. 4 gigs of memory. One Only one slot used, though. And that's interesting. Intel i5, 6500. So 6th Gen i5. Well, it doesn't have the lettering for a mo mobile CPU, which is interesting. Also, it doesn't actually say VPro anywhere. Very interesting. At the moment, it seems like it's just a basic Office HP desktop with an i5 6th gen, 4 gigs of memory, a hard drive, integrated graphics. It also says that Windows needs to update, but from where I got it from, I'm certain that this is a VPro system. That's something I'm absolutely certain of. And so it's interesting that it's not showing any immediate signs of that. Because while fundamentally it's the same chip, it's not identical. This is the official website that Intel has for their VPro CPUs. And they answer a few like general facts, like what is the Intel VPro system? It is business class performance. Essentially, whatever CPU you're using is massively optimized, as well as l less battery usage. It's got things like hardware-based security ba baked into the chipset and the CPU itself. Remote manageability. Like, for a VPro system, an IT specialist doesn't even have to be at the machine to have it working and be able to tinker with it, which some other apps do provide. But if you're using VPro, since it's baked into the hardware itself, you don't even have to have the machine turned on 
as well as it's just far more long-term stable. It talks about how, yeah, businesses use Intel V Pro to deliver benefits to performance, security management, and stability, and give some older platforms things like support for Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, and Thunderbolt 4 technology. Now, while I'm not 100% sure it's Thunderbolt, this one definitely has the USB-C it was talking about, and keep in mind this was a 6th generation CPU. While it wasn't unheard of, it was definitely rare that USB-C was on the 6th gen. How does it work? As it says here, as it says here, Intel V Pro is enabled on select Intel processors, but it also exceeds beyond the CPU as it has things like chipset benefits. Now that we've actually established what it is, I want to do some benchmarking and testing. Obviously, it's an Office PC. We already know it's not going to do amazingly, but I want to run 3D Mark because that gives some definitive numbers and at least try a few games. I know that it's not necessarily going to go well and I'm not expecting it to, but I figure there's no harm. So let's boot up 3D Mark. Though, even though the fact that it's V Pro means that hypothetically I could manage it remotely. I'm probably not going to test that because that requires a lot of network setup and a lot of that sort of setup for something very basic that I know that I don't know will work due to it still being connected to a business technically. I actually don't know if it is still connected to a business because of the wipe I did earlier and it needs to reset the trusted platform module but it still could be. But I hate that I don't have another 6th gen Intel i5 lying around to compare to the V Pro's performance. It's going to be interesting though. Okay, I'm going to do Night Raid, then a CPU profile, then I'm going to try Time Spy, but I don't know if it'll work. But let's start with Night Raid. That's our score for Night Raid. That's the score for the CPU profile test. This is the Time Spy score. The CPU score isn't too bad. It's the graphics score though, because it's integrated graphics. So next, I'm going to try a few games just for benchmarking. Full transparency, I don't exactly expect it to go well, but I figure there's no harm. So a game like the original Doom on Steam is running at about 70 FPS on this machine. It's kind of low, actually. It sounds like a big number, but Doom's also really easy to run. I've got a very basic game, like Gang Beasts, running at like 15 FPS, which is very low. And Gang Beasts is not a hard game to run. A game like Half-Life 2 is running at about 60 FPS, but I've always had issues getting it above that. I believe that's just the engine though. Portal 2, which normally runs pretty well, is only getting like 20, 25 FPS here. I've seen it get up to the hundreds before. After a long time of waiting, Assassin's Creed essentially booted up. But while it says 1 FPS, it is not moving. Hi, little cat. No matter what I push on the keyboard, it's not going anywhere. So, it is not doing anything. So, this is the machine opened up. It's a very curious machine. It's got a proper actual CPU socket under there, not integrated, soldered on. But still has sodium RAM. And despite having two different NVMe slots, has a hard drive in it. Got a heatsink up here for cooling. Two heat pipes, take it up there, heatsink, the fan blows it out. But what about the actual V Pro stuff? Most of V Pro stuff is on the PCH, the Platform Controller Hub by Intel, which is part of the chipset. I actually haven't been able to find it on here yet. I'm pretty sure it's one of these two though, which has most of the instructions for V Pro, like how you can start it without it being even turned on, access it without it being turned on, all these extra benefits and features. But this is a V Pro machine which is more energy efficient as this machine, while it's a 6th gen i5, but keep in mind it's a proper one, this whole machine runs on just 180 watts of power and the extra things like cyber security, which is just baked into the hardware. It's hard to see just looking at a board like this, but for business, this is a massively optimized machine and I think it's a fascinating case study. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video about Intel V Pro, which is the computer that I technically shouldn't have because consumers can't buy it. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It would help out a ton. And leave a comment on whatever device and specs you use for your work or business or whatever. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and bye-bye.